Hi, I'm Bruce Kilgallen, and I'm here to give you a little closer look at our VGS unit. It's a very compact, efficient, and portable unit. It uses pump-on-demand technology, so it does not run continually, which means you don't need to run water lines to cool the pump. The unit is also designed to be updatable at any time, so as your molding needs change, the unit can change with them. Now, let's take a little closer look. This is the nameplate. It includes our OSCO job number, sometimes referred to as a P number. This is a serial number, specific to the unit. If you ever need to call OSCO for support, please have this number handy for your OSCO representative. This is the input connection for the trigger from the press. The unit can be run by position, time, or cavity pressure. Here are the hose connections. We use male and female quick disconnects and the hoses are a 20 foot standard length. This gauge shows the working pressure of the unit. We recommend 600 to 1000 PSI for hydraulic and 120 PSI for pneumatic. This is the control unit and as you can see it's detachable. Now let's say you wanted to be able to control the gates with the mold open so you can make sure each one is working or perhaps you want to purge through just one gate. Of course, you would want to check with your valve gate manufacturer to see if purging is recommended for your system. You would simply detach the control unit and take it over to the mold. This demo unit will serve as the mold for our video today. The red lights signify a closed gate and a green light will signify an open gate. Let's say you wanted to verify that gate three is opening. You would select gate three from the setup screen, put it on manual and hold the test button. You can use the same procedure if you wanted to check one gate or all the gates in the system. Now, let's take a closer look at the control unit. This is the home screen for the unit. It comes standard with a black and white display or an optional color display is available. Here you can see the working pressure of the unit. Here you can see when the valves are open by the trigger charging portion. Here we have the mold save tab, the go to setup tab, the diagnostics tab, and the start stop switch. This displays the name of the current mold. From here, our next stop will be the setup screen. Here you can see the go to mold save screen, the go to main screen, and the test tab. The test tab is useful if you want to cycle through the unit without it being in use at the press, as it will simulate the opening and closing of the gates. Now, let's take a look at how to set up the operation of the valve gates. For demonstration purposes, we will show this as a four drop system. In our first example, we will have four gates all opening after a one second delay, and then all four gates closing after three seconds. In our second example, we will have all the gates opening after a one second delay again, but this time we will have two gates closing after three seconds, and the remaining two gates closing after five seconds. In our third example, we will have the gates opening in one second increments, beginning with a one second delay, and we'll have all the gates closing after each one has been open for three seconds. Now we'll take a look at our mold memory screen. It has tabs for save to memory, load from memory, and delete. The unit holds up to 20 different mold settings and they can be named in a variety of ways. It could be by job number, part number, mold number, barcode, customer name, or pretty much any way you like. To add a new mold once you have all the settings in place, you simply press the save to memory tab. Enter the name, and save it. To load a previously saved mold, simply press the Load From Memory tab. To delete a mold, you simply choose that mold and hit Delete. Now we'll take a look at our diagnostic screen. If you are experiencing any type of trouble with your unit, there are a couple of things you need to do prior to calling OSCO for tech support. On the side of the unit is a plaque, which has a P number inscribed on it. This is the serial number for the unit. Please have this number available when you call for tech support, as our tech representative will be able to see the exact specifications that the unit was built to with this number. Also, if possible, 
you will want to have the unit running with the diagnostic screen showing. This is what the diagnostic screen looks like. As you can see in the first column, these are the set points that the controller normally operates at. In column two, you see the current settings for the unit. By comparing these two sets of numbers, an OSCO tech representative can help diagnose the problem you may be having. As far as preventative maintenance goes, it has been our experience that regular cleaning of the filter screen can prevent most potential issues with this unit. This is a step-by-step -step how to clean the screen. The screen is located here inside the pump. As you can see, there is a sight glass on the pump so you can easily see the current oil level. These instructions are included in the owner's manual and are available on our website. Voltage options relative to pump sizing and number of zones. With a hydraulic unit having one to eight zones, the unit comes standard with a one gallon per minute pump and 120 volt single phase power supply. You may choose to run the unit on either 230 or 480 volts in a single or three phase for additional charge. For a hydraulic unit with more than eight zones, the standard is a 3.5 gallon per minute pump with a 230 or 480 volt three phase power supply. If you don't see a particular option you would like here, just ask us if it's available. With the open technology platform we use, there are any number of things that can be added to a unit for a specific customer request.